Hi, I'm Brian, and today we'll be looking at the ACCA P5 March-June 2017 exam question paper. And uh, this is my second video on requirement A of question 3. Assess whether NJN's existing warehouse information system is effective in reducing waste and adding value in NGN's workflow. So this is my second video in a series of videos to answer requirement A. In an earlier video, we have already done uh, step one, two, three about here. So now we are going to focus on step four and step five. We're going to draw from our knowledge and understanding. And of course, we need to answer the question requirements. So I have over here my um, workings, which I've done from an earlier video in which we have gone through the question and we have uh, selected important information with which we can use to answer the question. Now, if you would like to find out or learn more about how we came to these conclusions and where we got this information from, uh, please take a look at video number one, part one, which you will, will see appearing on the top right of your screen. Okay, so we have already extracted a lot of things from the question prompt over here. Right, so we're going to focus on these bullet points and we're going to show you how we're going to use that to build our answer. So straight off the bat, one thing that we can see that is a recurring feature in this WISS system for NJN is that there is a lot of manual work, lots and lots of manual work. There's manual input, there's manual picking, there's printouts, there's manual reconciliation. So there's a lot of manual work. So when we are framing an answer, one of the good things we can do is we can have a header that talks about these manual uh, processes. So that would be over here, labor intensive and manual processes. Um, the second thing that we can talk about is that some of the workflow steps in NGN's um, inventory management is quite convoluted and wasteful. Like for example, you have things like haphazard uh, arrangement of items. You know, items are arranged haphazardly. You have communication with clients which are manually. You have to request um, physic. You have to do physical um, requests for physical packing list if you lost it. So there's quite a lot of um, convoluted and wasteful processes which are prone to error. So we're going to use that as our second header. So that's over here. So let's take a look at the labor intensive processes first. Um, I'm going to give you my outline on how I combine this, these thoughts, which I've technically highlighted from the question, into a useful answer. So that will be over here. So first of all, we're going to talk about the packing list, the communications with the client through email, and the special reports which are also manually generated and manually reconciled whenever we run into some kind of problem. Alright, so these are the items relating to the labor intensive processes and for wasteful workflows and mistakes we're going to talk about first of all the physical packing lists we're going to talk about the fact that it's only input once every 24 hours we're going to talk about um, the picking lists are only created in the morning and they are physically printed and of course the haphazard arrangement of goods in the storehouse anywhere you want to put them you just put um, yeah so that's how we're going to how we're going to approach our answer okay so we'll start up here with our packing list packing list is manually input so let's take a look at how this works so when you have a manually input process basically someone sitting in front of a computer and keying in something from a piece of paper that is a waste of time and it introduces a lot of errors you know you mistype one two become two one you might have this kind of transposition errors and that introduces errors into the system. So this is not a good idea. It's very wasteful as far as manpower is concerned. Communication with clients through email um, may seem okay, but there is a problem. When we communicate through email, one thing happens is that your customer also needs to have somebody there to communicate with you. So not only are you wasting your own manpower, you're wasting your customer's manpower time. So that's a problem. And then when you have some kind of issue, maybe a wrong inventory number, or maybe your customer didn't follow the correct format, or maybe there was um, yeah, some kind of issue, 
the delays will compound and multiply. And of course, there's a potential miscommunications with clients, maybe attachments not sent or things like that. So like, for example, one of the specific things mentioned here is that if we don't have stock, we will email them. So they have to wait for us to email them in order to get their stocks, to find out that they have no stock. So that is a waste of time as well. So there's potential miscommunication there as well. Okay. And third of all is that when we encounter inventory problems, the reports are manually generated by the manager. It's not part of an automated system where you have reconciliation done automatically and you and it, and the computer tries to do it. No, it's all done manually. And the reconciliation is also done manually between these physical reports and the reports from the client, the sports goods manufacturer. So that is also a big waste of time. The manager has to do it by himself. I'm sure he got better things to do. And most importantly, your personnel is diverted from key tasks. Your main task is to fulfill your customers' orders. But if they are spending time reconciling this, that means they are, they are not providing value to the customer. You're just firefighting, you know, trying to fix problems rather than satisfying the customer. So now we're going down to our next header, which is the potential for wasteful errors and mistakes. First of all, that's obvious, it's a physical packing list. When we lose a packing list, that means maybe it was lost in the shipment. It might not even be your fault. That means we need to request the supplier to send us a duplicate packing list. If not, we don't know what's supposed to be in the box, in the shipment. And when that happens, you have significant delays in sorting. You can't sort the goods unless you know what's supposed to be there and what's not supposed to be there while you're awaiting a replacement list. So that's a really big waste of time. My second point over here is that the packing list is only input once every 48 hours. There is a 48 hour time gap between what is in the WIS and what is your actual inventory. That's a, that's a lot, especially if we're talking about peak periods when there's a huge amount of input and output into your warehouse. You have a delay of 48 hours that could be tens of thousands of items. right? So here we have WIS system will not be up to date. This will lead to poor satisfaction of customer orders. If you have time, you can further elaborate that by talking about how, um, how your, your customer might request a particular pick, and then you will tell your customer that that pick does not exist in your warehouse, but actually it is. It's sitting somewhere, not yet input into the system. So you might already have the stock, but it's just not in the system. So you have to tell your customer, sorry, we don't have the stock which again fails your KPI. All right, so what we have over here is that the goods have to wait until the packing list is manually input into the system. So they're kept in a sorting area. And if you read the question, this problem is so bad to the point that, to the point that you have to rent another warehouse just to sort the goods, which you can find it over here, you see? Um, an additional warehouse is required to sort the incoming goods. So this problem has is that bad. Okay, so let's go on. <clears throat> uh, these goods, if they are not input to WIS system, they are potentially misplaced or stolen. Right? They can be stolen, they can be misplaced, they could go missing, and you will not know because they are not in the WIS. The only way to find out is when we do the manual reconciliation later okay and then we let's talk about the picking process this is the output side now the picking process picking lists are only created in the morning and physically printed in the office i'm imagining that such a warehouse would be really huge gigantic football size field and what's going to happen is if you're physically printing these um, picking lists the your personnel have to come to the office every morning pick up some copy of long copy of all the picks for the day and then spend their life picking from there they'll keep coming back to the office to get a new list and things like that. that's that's a waste of time so and of course one thing that we can talk about is there is a potential 24 hour delay from a time of customer request to the start of pick so let's say um, your customer request came in in 10 a.m on a monday right but you only print out the picking list for picking at the end of 
at the end of the day or in the morning of the next day, which is Tuesday. So that's 24 hours gone doing nothing to satisfy this customer. You only start on Tuesday. So that's there's a potential 24 hour delay there. Um, potentially information overload on picking list. They have quite a lot of information. According to the question, it seems as if the picking list has all the items in the stock and then the quantities and how many picks. Probably some gigantic spreadsheet which they paste on the wall. And this information or overload might lead to errors in the picking process. You pick the wrong good or you pick the right good but you send it to the wrong client or you, you got the location wrong, you got to come back and check. All this is a waste of time. Okay. And of course, the question did specifically mention there's a high percentage of inventory problems. That means we fail to satisfy our customer orders. Now, talking about the haphazard arrangement of goods in the warehouse, that's like coming home and just throwing everything wherever there's free space. You don't have any organized system. So this will lead to inefficiencies when we are trying to pick. You might find three pieces of product A over here and then another two more pieces over there and they're not in the same place so you just to pick 10 units you need to travel the whole warehouse so that's a very big waste of time right and of course when you have a haphazard arrangement of goods there's high chance of things being misplaced or even the location keyed in wrong into the WIS so it's a wrong location in WIS so one thing that we can note is that NJN has tried to respond to these problems by implementing cyclical inventory counts and by renting an additional warehouse. But these things, they are costly. They are very expensive to do this. You're, you're hiring more employees to do this and you have to pay additional rental and it doesn't improve the value created for the customer. You're just firefighting and spending more money and not fixing the problem. So in conclusion, the current labor-intensive WIS, which is accompanying flawed workflows, lead to significant waste in time and manpower and do not add value to the customer's needs of accuracy and throughput. Throughput here meaning number of customer orders fulfilled. You want to fulfill as many as you can. And this system is not helping you fulfill those orders as you need to satisfy your client. Okay, so... This is the end of my second video for requirement A of question 3. Um, hopefully this helps you. If you need to uh, revise further, please go to the first video again to see how we got to this stage where we have identified the parts in the video. And um, as usual, you can download this answer from the about section of my video. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck with your exams and like and subscribe. Thank you very much.